All right, folks, so here's the new iLunes HD2 from Retivas. You can see it says 146525, and when I go ahead and I press the PTT, or push to talk button, I get a frequency error. And what that's telling me is that this is out of band, and that's not what we want for North America. So let me show you how to fix that. I wanted to say that I was contacted by Retivas or Aluns, and they asked if I would do a video review of this product, and of course I said yes. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who gets triggered by things like that, it's best you go watch some cat videos. So here's something that I snipped out of the instruction manual for the iLunes HD2, and you can see it's for the frequency range. And if you take a look at it, it says TX or transmit, and that is 144 to 146, and that's why it didn't transmit on 146525. It says it'll transmit on 430 through 440. And so the, what's concerning here is, is that that's not indicative of ITU Region 2 for the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. Okay, here's my radio and here's my programming cable. The other end of this cable is a USB plug and it's plugged into my computer already. And then you can see there's a screw that holds this in place. On the side of my radio, I need to take this screw out. This radio has waterproofing and that's why it has a screw connector on this. So just pop that off and then I go ahead and I pop this on. I want to make sure it's seated well, and then I just want to tighten this up. There's no need to crank it down. Okay, once my cable's connected, I'm just going to go ahead and turn my radio on like I normally would. And we're in frequency mode. Okay, in order to run the CPS software that we need to make the configuration change, I had to update my USB drivers for the programming cable. So right here you have HD1 USB driver Win 11. I'm actually running Windows 10, but this works. I'll include a link to download this in the description below. What you want to do is you want to right click on this, this zip file and then pick Extract All. It's going to ask you for a destination, which is going to be the same folder that you have the zip file in. I'm going to hit Extract. When this is done, I'm going to have a folder that is not a zip folder. Double click on that and I see the driver. I double click on that and I get this information saying Windows protected your PC. It's not a virus. I'm going to hit more info and I'm going to hit run anyway. You get this because this driver is not digitally signed. Once you get the driver setup window, click install. The driver's installed. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to go to my device manager. After plugging the cable in, the USB cable, I come over to ports, com, and LPT. I double click on that. And I can see here I have something called COM7 USB Reader. This is the COM port that I'm going to use to program my radio via the CPS or computer programming software. In order to install the CPS and have it work with your radio, it has to be the version that is compatible with the firmware on your radio. I did a firmware update a while back and I'll link that video below and inside that folder there was a firmware and there was a CPS. I've done the latest firmware upgrade off camera. This is the download for that. I'll include a link to this below. Now when I right click on this zip file I'm going to pick extract all, hit extract and I have a new folder. I'm going to go into that folder just like I did before. Now, I've already updated the firmware, so I'm not going to use the firmware V203 GPS. Mine's a GPS version. I'm going to come down here to the Retivas iLunes HD2 version 107. Because I have firmware 203 installed, I need to use the version 107 of the software. I agree that doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's the way it is. I'm going to right-click on this. I'm going to pick Extract All. Now, I'm going to go into the folder that was created there, this 107. In there is an executable file. This will install my CPS software. I'm going to double click on that to run it. Again, I get Windows protected your PC. Again, this is because it's not digitally signed. I'm going to hit OK and run anyway. I'm presented with this wizard and I'm just going to run through the installation. I'm going to launch the program. Here's the CPS software. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to device and then I'm going to select my port. Remember, we use COM7, so I hit OK. The COM port might be different on your computer. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click read. Now it's reading from my radio. My radio tells me that it's reading from it. Now keep in mind, when I connected my radio, I did have it turned on, but I did not have it in DFU or device firmware update mode. It was just on with the cable connected to the radio and plugged into my computer. Okay, the read completed okay. I'm going to click okay. The next thing I'm going to do is come over here to Freak Set. When I do this, you can see my radio is set for ITU Region 1. It says transmit 144 to 146, 430 to 440, and then my receive frequencies. I'm going to select ITU Region 2. This will give me 144 to 148. It will also give me the 220 band on 222 through 225. And then on 70 centimeters, it gives me 422. 500, 450 megahertz. All I have to do is check that. Then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to pick write. When I do this, it will write the configuration change to my radio. The write is OK. So I'm going to hit OK. OK, here's the radio. After doing our update, 146525, I press the PTT. And then you could see that it transmitted. I can also go to 222500, and you can see we are now on the 220 band. Same thing. I was able to transmit without a problem. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.